for Inside Utah Politics. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Glenn Mills. It is time to go Inside Utah Politics. We do begin this morning with Troy Williams, Executive Director of Equality Utah, here to discuss this legislative session. Troy, always glad to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Glenn. Good to be here. Uh, first off, just give us an overall view of how you describe this year's legislative <laughs> session. Yeah, it, you know, everyone I, laughs when I ask. That. I can hold two mm. seemingly contradictory truths. Um, mm. We live in a moment in American and Utah politics where there is this unprecedented level of support, love, and acceptance for LGBTQ Americans. And we live in a time where, where armed protesters show up to our events to intimidate and threaten us. We live in a, in a moment where we have LGBTQ legal protections on the state, federal level, and, and several Supreme Court precedents. And we're also seeing a nearly 400 anti-LGBTQ bills introduced in state houses across the country, and here in Utah as well. So it's the best of times, and it's also uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, you always do a good job up on the Hill, I've, I've said over and over again, of the approach and the strategy mm -hmm. you yeah. take. Uh, you s stay away from demonizing yeah. and, <laughs> and calling people out. Talk about why that's an important part of the success you have. Well, even though some, yeah, no, know, for sure. I know some people would say that this wasn't a successful year yeah. in ways, but still, yeah. talk about that. It's so important that we don't demonize each other, especially our opponents. When you go up and you meet lawmakers on Capitol Hill, it's it's easy if you're just if you just know them through Twitter or through the, um, their the newscast, um, it's easy to um, see them as, as caricatures to dehumanize them and to see them as not you know, full-rounded, compassionate humans. But when you meet them, they are public servants. They have dedicated their lives. You may have an ideological difference with them, but you can certainly see their humanity. And by seeing their humanity, maybe, possibly, they'll see ours as well. You had a big win this legislative session. Yeah. Let's start off with that one. Sure. And that is involving conversion therapy. That's right. Uh, this basically takes an administrative rule put into effect by then Governor yeah. Herbert at the time and codifies it. Yeah. Talk about what it does specifically. Sure. So, um, just you know, in 2020, um, we couldn't get a bill through the legislature. It was very contentious. We couldn't find political alignment. So we kind of went around the legislature uh, and passed it through the, the division of, of uh, occupational and professional licensing, and that has the efficacy of law. But, uh, but it's not codified in statute. Mm -hmm. So it still, it banned the, the harmful practice of conversion therapy, but I, there, there was some resentment, I think, that had built up with some lawmakers. They are the lawmaking body of our government. And, you know, uh, Representative Bramble was very concerned about it, and then Representative Pearson were concerned about the process of it. Mm -hmm. And they had some issues uh, with uh, some ambiguity in the ban. And it became very clear early in the session that, that our conversion therapy ban was actually vulnerable to be overturned. And this was that moment where, you know, I had all these ideas in my head about Representative um, Bramble and Brammer and, and, or Senator Bramble, mm -hmm. uh, Representative Brammer and, and Representative Pearson. But when I went in to chat with them, and I let my defenses go down and actually listen to them, I realized that we weren't as ideologically apart as I originally assumed. And we started to engage with each other in really constructive dialogue and listen to each other. And I realized that, that neither Representative Peterson or Representative Brammer wanted to harm LGBTQ kids. They didn't want them to be subjected to um, unethical and harmful practices. They just wanted some clarifications in the law. And, and I, I really want to thank both leadership in the House and in the Senate and, and Governor Cox for encouraging us to get around the table and work together to find a solution. And we did. Uh, and so this new law is, it actually codifies the ban in statute, which is a more enduring protection. Uh, it does not allow a therapist to uh, subject uh, a gay or transgender person to conversion therapy to try to alter or, 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 or force their, a change in their orientation or their gender identity, but just allow for some clarifications to help therapists know what they can and cannot talk about. And, and that's all good. What, that, what happened as a result of that is that we passed it through the House unanimously. Mm -hmm. We passed it through the Senate mm -hmm. unanimously. That has never happened. All the conversion therapy bans across the country have never had a unanimous vote in both the House and the Senate. And next week, Governor Cox signs it. And you started off opposed to this bill. That's I mean, right. You've already gone through the process yeah. of how that played out, but 
You guys started out saying this is not the way to go, and That's you right. were very concerned about this yeah. when I talked to you on opening yeah. day. Yeah, conversion therapy, you know, it, it, we know it doesn't work. Uh, we know it, it, it increases people's shame, and, 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 and it increases the likelihood of suicide ideation for young people. And so we were very concerned that that ban would be in jeopardy. Um, but we got together, we worked through it, we found common ground. And I'm so grateful for all the lawmakers who encouraged that process. That is politics at its very best. Another bill that went through the first two weeks of the session, also signed into law by the governor within the first two weeks of the session, I believe the second Saturday of the session, uh, was one you opposed, Senate yeah. Bill 16. Yeah. It essentially bans right. medical treatment for youth who are in the transition process. Yeah. We heard a lot about, you know, look, we're seeing these more progressive European countries yeah. kind of take a different approach to this. So that's one reason we should scale back. Yeah. And we also heard a lot about this is a permanent decision uh, that those who support the bill say maybe in your teenage years you shouldn't be right. making. Yeah. Your thoughts on those points? Well, this is where I, I, I feel like we as a, as a as the legislature and as the stakeholders where, where we actually fell short. We weren't able to come together to find common ground and actually find that, that grand compromise. Uh, and I think as a result, we have a lot of parents now and families with transgender children who are frightened, who are scared, who don't know if they're going to be able to stay in the state of Utah uh, because they fear having their access to their, their medical care um, taken from them. And we feel that it is an overreach of government uh, for the state to get involved in the very intimate decisions that parents and their children must make with their doctors. That's a very, that's a very sacred relationship, and we don't believe that the, th the state should be involved in that. Uh, we do understand that there, there is a great debate on these issues. We do understand that, um, that other countries are making different choices, and we need to allow that process to go forward. We need to look at all the data and trust the science that will get better better information as time goes by because all of us and I believe everybody on this around the, the table on this issue cares about the, the well-being and the health of transgender children and want to make sure that they can thrive and I want to make sure that they can thrive not just in this country but here in Utah which is their home. We have about a minute left but I would really like your insight on uh, you were at the table in trying to work on this bill. What was a point that you could have got on board with? What would have been the grand compromise, well, as you say? Well, there has to be a path forward. Now, these other European countries that are putting up higher guardrails, none of them have actually banned the practice of affirming care. They have just increased the rigor of the protocols and put some of, uh, of their youth through more um, robust clinical trials. Uh, had we done that through the University of Utah, I think this, the, the state would have, the law would have been um, stronger at, at resisting a legal challenge. But right now, as it is, as a ban, uh, it will be litigated against and, and probably, I'm going to predict, uh, won't hold up to equal protection claims. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have about 30 seconds left. The law passed. It's signed into law yeah. now. So if you know someone in your life that might be struggling, what's the best approach? Well, you have to know that, that this, is, this is a... Um, this, this, the arc of justice is long, but it, you know, I'm sorry, what's the, what is that the arc of history is long, but it bends mm -hmm. towards justice? This is a moment on the journey, um, but this is not the end of the story. And that we're going to continue to work that every gay and transgender American, uh, it is our birthright to enjoy equal protection under the law, and that's what we're working to achieve. Troy Williams with Quality Utah, thanks for your time. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Glenn. Still to come, more on the legislative session.